Hello everyone and welcome back to Subnautica. I am of course William Strife and like I said, this is Subnautica. So, um, if this is the first episode you're watching, uh, it's probably gonna be the last episode that I do. Um, cause I know that a lot of you like to watch out of order or you're just looking for something specific. Um, this is, uh, me not so much playing through Subnautica as much as it is me trying to show you how to play the game, get the tech, get to where you need to go, etc. Um, also give you information about coordinates. I'll say right up front, um, you hit F1, you get this debug feed, and if you read over on the right there, camera world position, that is your position in the world. So that, I'm definitely going to bring that up at some point. Anyways, last time around we actually looked at what was known as the uh, precursor update, uh, which came out ages ago at this point. But nonetheless, it's the uh, it's the latest update, and it's what uh, this version of Subnautica is. Uh, so uh, some of you were very salty about the fact that I covered it late compared to other people, and uh, to you guys, I have to say, I don't care that I did it late. I did it because this is a good game and it's worth playing to a certain extent. Um, I have a lot of nitpicks about the way that this game functions. Anyways. Um, Today, I'm finally going to get around to something that I really hope becomes more useful, which is the Cyclops submarine. So I'm going to go ahead and surface here and hope that I can find my mobile vehicle bay. Here we go. I don't remember what all it takes, but the Cyclops submarine is, uh, some, is the third and final submersible that you can build in this game. Oh, for God's sake. Let me climb. There we go. So, <clears throat> the Cyclops submarine, right over here, is the uh, third and the last submersible that you can make in the game thus far. I don't know if they're going to expand it, the other two being the Seamoth and the Prawn. So the Cyclops comes in three separate blueprint fragments. You have to find the hull, the engine, and the bridge. And I think that each of those has three fragments apiece. So you have to scan nine total fragments, and then you can actually construct the, Cyclo construct the Cyclops here at the mobile vehicle bay. So to build this, you need five plasteel ingots, five enable glass, two lubricant, and one advanced wiring kit. And I've done a lot of work to make certain that I have the proper materials here. So we need an advanced wiring kit. This is um, a computer chip plus uh, uh, plus a little bit of gold to make an advanced wiring kit. So we got one of those. We need five plasteel ingots. One, two, three, four, five. Now, uh, plasteel ingot, just in case any of you are unaware, plasteel ingots are made out of one, a titanium ingot, which is uh, you take ten of these normal titanium, run them through the fabricator to get an uh, a titanium ingot, and then you add one little bit of lithium, and you get a plasteel ingot. And then we need five enameled glass. Now, I've already made four enameled glass right here. One, two, three, four. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and point something out really, really simply to you about enameled glass and how difficult it can be to make. It's one of those things where you're not gonna need it except for pretty much this one single instance. You'll almost never need an enameled glass if you're not making a cyclops. Um, that being said, you want to uh, you want to be able to make this stuff right away whenever you need it. So you need to be on the lookout for stalker teeth. Okay, stalker teeth have to be combined with normal glass. Normal glass being made out of quartz. You come right over here. Resource basic materials enamel glass. And the thing about enamel glass is, um, and the stalker teeth that you need to get them. It's not that hard to find the stalker teeth. You just need to you know hang around stalkers. They're not that desperately. Um, uh, threatening. They're the, uh, they're the kind of fish with the long, uh, with the long jaw that hang around out in the shallows and they will try to, they'll try to nip at your heels. So one of the ways that you can get your hands on these stalker teeth, aside of just looking around the shallows where stalkers are, is you can also, uh, swim up to the, uh, up to their general vicinity and take a piece of scrap that, you know, you can process into titanium and just, you know, right click it to drop it out of your inventory and the stalker has a pretty good chance that they're going to try to pick it up and carry it around. And if you do that, when stalkers pick up scrap, there is a, there's a relatively good chance that they are going to lose a tooth when they do that. So essentially you are, you are encouraging stalkers to lose teeth. <laughs> um, but that's one of the ways that you can get your hands on the stalker teeth, all right? Um, Again, it's probably something that you want to just kind of be vaguely aware of because um, uh, enamel glass has a very limited application. 
All right, so all of the materials in hand, we can go ahead, come in here, vehicles, Cyclops, with five plasteel ingots, five enamel glass, two lubricant, and an advanced wiring kit. Warning, the Cyclops is designed to be operated by a three-person crew, only experienced helms people should attempt to pilot this ve vehicle solo. Which says that I'm in over my head with this baby, but the Cyclops is a huge huge thing for me to be operating on my own, and the game is not being facetious as it says, you know, it's intended to be piloted by three people. So, let's just go ahead and hop inside of this baby right off the bat. The way you get inside is by coming down at the bottom, and this is the access hatch. Welcome aboard, Captain. All systems online. So, let's go over this thing from stem to stern, alright? Uh, start off with, that's your entrance hatch. Go ahead and close the bulkhead door. You have five lockers in here. They're standard size lock- well, not really even standard. They're- they're just- they're small lockers to allow you to store stuff. You can take the, uh, the habitat builder and you can, uh, construct additional, um, you know, lockers and put them inside of this place, no problem. So, you've got the belly of the ship down here. We're gonna go ahead and come back here and go up into engineering. This is where the engine is. This is the slot where you put in your upgrade modules. There are only two upgrade modules for the Cyclops at current, so um, we'll get to those in a moment. And this thing is also powered by six. Three on this side, three on the opposite side of these um, power cells, okay? So the big, big power cells take six of these to run this baby. Go ahead and hop up the other side and you can see that there are another three on the opposite side, making a total of six. What's more, go ahead and close those bulkhead doors, you can come back here, pop this open, and you can actually dock the Seamoth or the Prawn Suit right down there, and this is your access hatch, whenever you're, uh, you know, how many fathoms deep. And of course you have a little buffer room here, and then you have the bridge, where you can come over here, you can turn the interior lights on and off, you can turn the exterior lights on and off as well, Keep all of those on. You can change the color, etc., just like all the other ships. And if you come up here, go ahead and grab the helm. Now, the way that the uh, Cyclops functions is a little bit different from other uh, submersibles. Because this thing is so damn large, and like you've got this enormous tail out behind you, um, there's a UI that will pop up about where I'm looking right now, on the glass, that will show you um, where you're going to hit or bottom out in the event that you... Uh, go too low. And in fact, let's go ahead and just start doing that right now. We're gonna, we're gonna go too low here. And we're gonna run the risk of bottoming out and taking some damage. See? Right there. It's telling- oh, oh, you're getting close, you're getting close. Back off it, back off it. So, there you go. And, um, it's critical to know, like, you, you can probably get away playing most of the game without knowing this, but C is your dive button, okay? And space, space being your, um, your ascend, uh, the button that you press to ascend. Um, but to help you pilot this massive Mamma Jamma, you can just left click on this, uh, camera icon, and this'll switch you to a camera that's right on the belly of the ship that can rotate 360 degrees, um, to help you understand where the bottom of your ship is. You can rotate up to, uh, switch to a camera on the top, and then you can rotate again to look at a camera right on the back side of the ship where your, uh, your rudder is, so... Three cameras in total that you can work with there. No problem. Uh, interesting. Go ahead and hit E to let go of the helm. Um, it's also possible to come in here if you just need to switch the cameras off. Just hit escape and you'll continue to pilot, so... That's the story with the Cyclops. Alright, so now that I've shown you the way that the Cyclops functions, let's look at some of the upgrades that you can get. So first off, the most important upgrade that we want to be poking with right off the bat is this Cyclops Power Efficiency Module. Now, if you've been following along, you'll know that I went into the Aurora some episodes ago, and I uh, patched up the drive core to prevent radiation from leaking out of the old ship. Now, whenever you're inside of that engine room, if you look around on some of the walkways, there will be a, uh, a module upgrade console with this Cyclops Power Efficiency Module, okay? This is the, the, it's the only place where you're going to be able to find it. You cannot fabricate one of these to the extent of my knowledge, um, which is critical and important. Now, the other thing that I'm gonna need is my, uh, Habitat Builder here. Okay, so I'm back inside of the, uh, 
Cyclops, and I'm going to come in here. I've got everything I need, the wiring kit, the computer chip, and two titanium, and I'm going to build a fabricator in here. Now, the reason I'm doing this is very specific. In order to increase the crush of the hull from 500 meters to, you know, anything higher, I'm going to have to install a depth, uh, a, a depth compensator, or whatever it's called. But to do that, um, I actually have to build it in a fabricator inside of the submarine, okay? And, and that's for some reason, very specific. I don't understand why you can't build this inside uh, of your base or inside of the life pod once you build the Cyclops, but that's the way it is. So, um, and we're gonna come over here to the modification station, this wonderful thing that took us quite a while to create. And we want to create an Ultra Cyclops Reinforcement Module, which um, rearranges the submarine's hull atomic structure to increase safe depth by extreme amounts. So, you need the compensator first off, then you need another aluminum oxide crystal, and the real sticking point, 10 plasteel ingots. That's insane. I mean, it, it, take, it took me forever, so... One, two... Th and I've still got two left over, thank God, but... We'll go ahead and do that. We can come right, right up over here. Cyclops upgrade, and we can modify... the pressure compensator for it. And there we go. Now we're gonna go be able to go down to, I think, 1300. Um, meters. There's a very limited amount of space on the map where you can actually fit the Cyclops and go that deep. So that that will do us just fine. That's uh, that's that for that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do one more thing here. Now, what I typically like to do is put the prawn suit inside of the docking bay for the Cyclops, but um, the Seamoth is what is really really mobile. So instead, I'm going to dock the sea moth into this baby. Welcome aboard, Captain. All systems online. Uh, something that you need to be careful of that I need to point out right at this moment is the fact that the sea moth, as well as the uh, Cyclops, if they are not fully charged and they, uh, they dock into this thing, what will immediately happen instantly, then, like, there's no time delay, is the, uh, the energy inside of your Cyclops energy cells will immediately transfer to completely charge up your submersible, okay? Whatever your small ship is, whether it be the sea moth or the, um, the prawn suit. It will immediately suck all of the power that it can out of the cells in back to charge up, uh, your deployable, okay? So, you can very quickly end up with a dead submarine, okay? Which is dangerous and you don't want that to happen, but it's a thing to be aware of. <laughs> so, um, I'm gonna do one or two more things, including putting some food inside of this, um, submarine, and then we're gonna get to, uh, actually going out somewhere interesting. Alright, so here I am, pretty much right beneath the floating island, uh, in my Cyclops. Um, as you can see, the camera world position, uh, that is my location, if you are unaware of the location that I need to be at, negative 640, negative 940. It is camera world position, and I am referring to the first and the last numbers there, the coordinates. Uh, the middle number is how high or low in the world I am. If you look at that, 101 corresponds with my depth at the top of the screen. So, I've never, uh... I've, we've been down to the to the floating island more than once, but we've never gone beneath it. So, um, hopefully the game won't crash because what we're descending into right now is what's known as the Grand Reef, okay? And the Grand Reef can be, uh... It, it can be a bit crash-tastic for me. It can also be a little bit lag-tastic as well. Um, it can mess with my frame rates quite a bit. But what we want to do is we want to go down to a pretty deep, uh, level, uh, and actually, I could turn that off. Uh, I'm not getting the depth coordinates anymore, unfortunately, which is a bit of a shame, but that's just the way that it is. What I want to do is I want to take our submersible here to a fairly deep level, because I'm not just wanting to go into the Grand Reef here, I want to go into what's known as the Deep Grand Reef. Um, and I think that that's where I need to go right there, that big old frickin' hole in the ground. Now, this is... The, the Grand Reef isn't really all that dangerous, okay? It's deep, uh, it can be a little bit creepy, but it's really, honestly, not all that dangerous. So, if I go ahead and hit escape, I'm at, I'm at about 300 meters down. I'm looking to get down to about 500 meters. So, the Deep Grand Reef being basically a subterranean cave, I can't go down there inside of this, uh, this wonderful, massive submersible. Let's go ahead and get a, a tiny bite to eat while I'm here. Oh, it's not done growing. 
Should I just wait for it to... Let's just, let's just sit here and wait for it to finish growing. There we go. I got a potato. And I'm full. Okay, so, let's go ahead and pop open the hatch. We'll hop into our little sea moth. Welcome aboard, Captain. And, um... Okay, so this is, uh, this is an entrance to the Deep Grand Reef. Now, I'm gonna warn you, this place is dangerous. It's very dangerous because there are creatures down here who are extremely offensive. They will go after me, okay? So, um... Yeah, I think I'm gonna save my game. <laughs> okay, so game saved. Now let's descend into the Deep Grand Reef. Um, and we want to be extra careful. There are things down here that want to destroy me. But I think that showing you what's going on down in this deep reef is kind of important. Let's also hit F1 to bring up the uh, coordinates again. Again, it's 640, negative 940, first and last numbers there. So, I want to head north, I believe. Oh, I still have the energy pulse origin highlighted on my screen. Yeah, yeah, it's north. North is where I want to go. Um, I'm, I'm also going to give you a little bit of a warning. Uh... Light is not your- ooh, there it is. You see it? See these large crab things? Oh my god, are they ever dangerous. Okay, so... I'm gonna equip my vortex torpedoes... ...here. They're right- ooh, they're right quite hanging around. So this is the last abandoned base in the game, okay? As you can see in my, uh, coordinates here. Again, negative 640, negative 940. Okay, well. Um, so one of them came for me, and they've... Uh-oh. Ooh, ooh. Let's shut off the debug feed there. Okay, so, danger upon danger down here. Um, I'm gonna take a really quick leap and just get inside of this base. Hope that they don't freaking bite me. Oof. Okay, and if I'm lucky, they won't mess around with my, uh, my sea moth too much. Nope, looks like... Looks like, uh, they're knocking my sea moth around. Oof, and it's trying to go for me. Okay, so in here, you can find three separate PDAs about the fate of the Degasi crew, who, uh, were the last group of individuals who ended up inside of, uh, who, uh, crash-landed on this planet. So, there's one in here, there's another log further up, Okay, so back into the sea moth, relatively safe. And ah great, we've also got warpers down here. Just what I need. Now there's another log. And again, I'm not reading these logs for you guys because I think I think it's a, an interesting story and it's worth looking into on your own. Where would it be? Where could it be? There we go. That's where the next PDA log is, right along the support struts. So we'll come down here. We'll grab it. Paul Togel's log. Pop back into this baby. And then we'll, uh, we'll come around here. And we're gonna just hop right down here. Now you need to be careful about how close you get to this base because I've gotten, I've gotten stuck inside the wall of this, uh, underwater base before. Okay, so we're inside of the, uh, upper chambers. And our little crab friend is trying to make mincemeat of my sea moth again. And he's knocking it around. I really want him to stop that. Criminy. Horrifying is what they are. And then we've got the last data log, is it? I think that's the last data log. If it's not, there will be one more down this ladder. Let's see here. So the, uh, other major thing that I'm here for is this, okay? The orange artifact. Just the same as the purple artifact. Oh, no, wait, there's a fourth log, too. Okay, so there we go. Fourth voice data log. Now, as it stands, there's nothing inside of this base for me to scan, okay? Um, if by chance you don't have a, the alien containment thing, which is this big tank in the middle, you can get the, uh, get the data log from here. Okay, that's the sea moth right there. 
Go ahead and patch this baby up. And now that that's done, let's get out of Dodge because this place is crazy dangerous because of those uh, crabs, essentially. All right, back home, finally. All right, so uh, this this is pretty much it, guys. Uh, I went down to the last remaining abandoned base, and uh, you know there are some other biomes, etc., that are around in the game that I haven't been to. You know, there are places like the Blood Kelp, the Lost River. Um, uh, the inactive lava zone. I'm, I'm just trying to name some of the ones off the top of my head, but I can't really remember them all. But the point is that um, I've I've gone to everything that there really is to do in the game thus far. Uh, it's not that there won't be more, by all means. I mean, it's like in the last episode, uh, as I was at the precursor base, it's, it mentioned another facility like a thousand kilometers south west of the gun, and. Um, you know, that's that's just not in the base yet. Uh, that's not in the game yet, and there are more enemies and nemesis, uh, nemesis etc., to uh, look into and explore. And I know that a lot of the biomes that have been implemented in the game thus far that I have not looked at will have their purpose later on. But as it currently stands, any of the locations that are more unique and interesting are just that. They're unique and interesting, and they don't really serve a purpose yet. And because I'm playing this... Um, just to, like, try to inform all of you about how the game functions and works, uh, this is the end of Subnautica. There's nothing else to really show. The only other thing that I could show you are what are known as the Precursor Caches. Um, there are three of them on the map currently. You have to construct purple artifacts, which I showed you at the beginning how to do. Um, but all those caches really do is um, give you a little bit of information, there's a small data log, and then you get more of these ion crystals, which will probably come in handy whenever you need to get your hand, uh, get yourself inside of the uh, research facility, which is what's supposed to be added, as far as uh, I'm, uh, if, if I am properly informed, I am not certain. And um, the orange artifact probably has something to do with that. I know that in the game also there are currently more artifacts in the code, but they are not implemented yet. So, this is pretty much the extent of Subnautica. I didn't, uh, you know, get around to showing you every last thing possible. You know, if I come into the moon pool here very quickly and I access the fabricator in here, you can s see that there are several things that I didn't build, such as the prom suit, thermal reactor, uh, a jump jet upgrade, which is very useful for the prawn suit, um, the propulsion cannon, the grappling arm, um, you know, the torpedo arm. There's a lot of other things that I could have done with the prawn suit, but the prawn suit itself is a bit of a... It's a bit of a mess these days because, um, you can fall through the world space, and I have a lot of nitpicks about this game because while it is a fantastic game, it is a terrible piece of software because I cannot tell you how many times I've had freezing, crashing, and just general issues with the way that, um... The, uh, just, just, just having trouble with the game properly running and having to basically open the, f uh, the installation and, tr and hack apart the files. So, um, for that reason, I also cannot advise anybody to play this game. As, as much fun as in, and as interesting and as fascinating as this game is, as, as it currently stands, it is a terrible piece of software. It's a great game that's built on a terrible, that it's just bad software. It, it's got pop-in, it's got freezing, it's got crashing issues. Uh, the developers have done a fantastic job of making content that's worth playing, but they're not spending an anywhere near enough time fixing the raw program that everything runs on, so I can't advise anyone to actually pick this game up and play it. Don't buy Subnautica. I can't believe I'm saying this even after a 10-episode series where I've... And, and more than 40 hours in this game, I, I've, I've played it and like I've enjoyed myself, but I've torn my hair out so much that I can't advise you to play this game. <laughs> Um, but hopefully you guys learned something. I, I, I hate to end on a negative note there, but this is the end of Subnautica. Thank you very much for watching. Um, be certain to suggest other games below that you want me to play, and I'm certain that plenty of you are going to come through and tell me that, oh, it's no problem that, uh, you know, the game is unstable and it crashes all the time. It's just me. Well, you know what? You guys have your opinions, uh, but this is, a, this is a terrible piece of software that will not run without, um, needing a lot of tweaking after you get far enough into the game to actually care about it. So, um, in any case, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. Suggest new games for me to play below. And, um, of course, I will see you in the next episode. I'm William Strife. This has been Subnautica, and it's been fun. I'll see you in another video, another time. Later.